Hi everybody, this is Duke with a video explanation kind of demonstration of uh, some of the LED functions we can do with ArduPilot. So here on the table right now I have kind of the standard default setup I guess for LEDs. And most of you aren't familiar with PixHawks or things like that, um, but there's a standard kind of LED color code that is used and um, you can have your LEDs mirror that. So that's what's happening right now. I'm going to walk you guys through a couple of different scenarios in which you can use the LEDs to do different things. If you are familiar with PixHox, then great. Uh, you might recognize some of the colors that we'll see here with LEDs. So um, I'm going to be using uh, this, this dot cam here uh, to capture my display as well to go back and forth between uh, Mission Planner and the dot cam, uh, as well as the document that helps you understand what you want to program here. So you can use the LEDs uh, in ways that don't require any scripting at all, any Lua scripting usage on the, the autopilot. Um, that can be done, but as far as class goes, you'll need to at least try one of the scripts and you can use it after that or you can change it back to the standard configuration, whatever you want to do. I uh, just, just want to make you aware of that. You will need to use some kind of script at some point during class to set up your LEDs. So let's go display capture here. Okay. And well, I guess I should show you the document first. So here in the document, LEDs, we're using NeoPixel type LEDs. I have a couple of links okay, here. This one just to the LEDs uh, in general, and then we're gonna be using Lewis script specifically. So uh, the video that I'm making right now is this video <laughs> right here, okay? So I'm gonna show you some of this, and then we'll break this up into a couple parts, I think, just so it's not too long. A lot of rebooting of the flight controller in between changes here, so it can take a little while to get through things. But let's go back over to the web here. So external LEDs, uh, this is just the Pilot support for external LEDs. We're gonna skip over this part here with the, with the um, sorry, with the display, even though we are using the displays on our aircraft as well. Uh, it's a simple single parameter change, so I don't really, make you guys go to this page, but of course you can look at that if you want to. But down here we have serially, connect, serially connected devices. And so there's NeoPixel and uh, Profi LED, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but um, RGB LED strings, we're using NeoPixel LEDs. And the ones we're using take five volts and they're serially connected. So they have, the LEDs are basically kind of addressable. Um, and so you can give different LEDs different colors or things like that. Okay, so down here we go to NeoPixel, and that's the page I was on a second ago. I'm going to walk you through this basic setup first, just to get the LEDs functioning, and then we'll go into how to use a script with them in a later video. So the NeoPixel here, um, it talks about up to four strings of uh, NeoPixel can be used to display the same LED patterns as other RGB LEDs, including those commonly installed on GPS compass units, which would be like the PixHawk type uh, uh, flight controllers with their uh, kind of all-in-one GPS compass, maybe arming switch on the uh, GPS puck there, okay? I don't know if this limit is still in place for strings. I, I don't, I'm not sure if that's still in place or not. Nobody in class I don't think has more than four, so it should be good there. Uh, but I do know, um, basically it talks about up to four LEDs right here. But then up here it talks about up to 44 individual LEDs per string. So, you know, we're going to use a maximum of 20 per string and that I've tested that it works fine so this up to four limit here does not apply apparently probably just uh, needs an update on the documentation okay so there's a few parameters we're going to set here to get this to work and basically your LEDs are attached to a PWM output one of those S pads S1, S2, S3, S4 and most of yours are on S7 through S10 is what we talked about in class since they're on a separate output um, than the motors so we're going to go and find these parameters, NTF LED types, and NTF LED N, LEN, or LEN, um, and then we're going to set a servo function, okay? Uh, so let's go into Mission Planner and do that. I'm connected right now to the demo board that's on the table you saw a second ago on the dot cam, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and go into Config, okay? We're going to make a search for NTF. I always remember it's not NFT like those... Uh, non-fungible token, the Bitcoin things or whatever those are, opposite of that, NTF, okay? I actually don't know what that stands for. I should, I should look that up. But here we have our NTF, and then we can, we can uh, down-select for LED types, okay? We have a couple parameters here. Let's go back and look at which ones we need. LED types and LED len, okay? Oops. So LED types is a bit mask. So we'll click here, click set bit mask. You want to just make sure NeoPixel is selected. It's not selected by default. We're going to select it. Okay. 
And then depending on your strips of LEDs, uh, in my case I have two strips of 20, so I'm going to go ahead in here and change it to 20 from the default of 1. Okay. And later on, if you'd like, you can mess with the brightness of the LEDs. They do have different brightness levels. Um, but when USB is connected, the brightness will always be low, which is kind of nice for your eyes, right? It's probably right by your face when you plug in with USB. But at a minimum, we're going to change the number of LEDs and the LED types. We're going to write parameters. Okay. And then we can go here um, to the servo function. Okay, so you can set that via the servo function itself or via the servo outputs page. I'm going to go ahead and just use the parameters here. So again, the X stands for the number of the signal pad you attach the LEDs to, if that makes sense. So in my case, uh, here on the dot cam, let's see if we can see this. So you can see it's wired to the two ends of the servo PDB. Okay, and so in that Basically, what that means for my wiring is that I have one of the LEDs on servo output 7 and one of the out LEDs on servo output 10. So S7, S10, which means if we go back in here, we want, we're going to look for servo 7 function and servo 10 function in Mission Planner. I'm going to go ahead and go, oops, servo 7. Okay, servo 7 function is set to 120. That's NeoPixel 1. Okay. And servo 10 is set to 121, which is NeoPixel 2. Okay, and so we've set the uh, corresponding NeoPixel 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 uh, in the in the parameter for the servo whatever number it is function. Okay, once you do that, okay, you can let's see here. Go back to Mission Planner. We'll make sure we write our params. Okay, we're going to disconnect uh, from the computer. We'll just unplug it here so it um, isn't powered via USB anymore. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off for a second. And then I, I can't see it off camera, but I have a battery over here. I'm going to power cycle the demo board, and the USB is unplugged, so it will get a full power cycle. Okay, so turn it off. Okay. There's my transmitter. <laughs> turn it back on. You get the power up. You start to see things start booting. Realize there's two sets of tones for the ESCs typically, and after the second set, the autopilot is basically fully booted and start to see some things happening. Okay, so this little display turned on, which you've already configured that, it will turn on. The LEDs will, will turn on after that second boot up. And of course, the other items have already been turning on, but we'll, we'll uh, you'll be able to see that on your aircraft as you go. Okay, so the default kind of color scheme for the LEDs uh, I believe is is uh, yellow until it's ready to arm, and then blue when it's ready to arm but doesn't have a GPS fix, and then green when it's ready to arm and has a GPS fix, if I remember that right. It's been a little while since I've flown with a, a Pixhawk. But we can uh, see here on our little display, and if we plug back in the computer, we'll be able to see that. Let's go ahead and do that. Go back over here to Mission Planner real quick. Connect to the aircraft. We'll double check those status indicators. I think this is ready to fly, but yeah. So ready to arm, but no fix. So of course you can fly in you know altitude holder, stabilized mode, or something like that, but there's no GPS fix. I believe when it goes gets a GPS fix, which probably won't happen here indoors, uh, it will go to green flashing. I'm trying to remember for sure, but anyways, it's ready to arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm the aircraft with my transmitter. Okay, I'm going to go back to the dock cam for a second so you can see that. Uh, there we go. Okay, so when I arm it with the switch right here, okay, the LEDs go solid. And in this case, you know, I'm flying around, whatever. Um, I am still have a GPS fix. Uh, so that's one color scheme you can use. You go disarm and it starts blinking again. Okay. That's one color scheme you can use. If you want to try other color schemes, there are a couple other ones that are built in by default as in without using Lua scripting. So if you go to the config menu here, we're still connected to the copter. We'll go over, make sure I'm recording this. Okay, good. Go back to our NTF parameters, underscore. And there is this, um, let's see, LED, NTF LED override, okay? The source for the colors and brightnesses for the LEDs. And if you expand this out, you see there's a couple different options here. And if I go and I choose the standard, uh, we're not going to use scripting AP perif right now. We're going to try Outback Challenge, okay? And Outback Challenge has like specific color codes for safe to approach or not safe to approach the aircraft. So we're going to change that to Outback Challenge, write our params, okay? 
and actually changed kind of instantaneously. So we'll go over here. We didn't have to do a reboot. That's that's kind of nice. The LEDs changed to solid green as soon as I hit uh, Outback Challenge and wrote those parameters. Okay, the Outback Challenge parameters, I think, are supposed to be green uh, if it's disarmed, and then it goes to red when you're armed. Okay, so let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to arm the aircraft. Okay, there we go, red LEDs. So not safe to approach the aircraft is the idea here. Disarm back to green. So kind of a green-red sequence there. There's one other one, let's see, that I've tried in here. It's the traffic light. We'll click for me. It's mission planner's being funky. Let's try this again. There we go. Traffic light has a different uh, pattern sequence. <coughs> Excuse me, as well. And Mavlink scripting, AP Perif, well, we, we, you can use that for scripting as well. But I don't know if it's necessary because I thought I did some scripts earlier without setting that. So we'll, we'll, we'll uh, try, to, try to dig into that a little bit more later, perhaps. But those are basically some color patterns you can set with your LEDs uh, if you are not using scripting. There's kind of a few default ones, and that's pretty much it. So I hope that helps a little bit to understand some of these parameters. Let's see here. Sorry, I cough for a second. Excuse me. Okay, so I hope that helps with some of the setup there for the basic LED functions, making sure your LEDs are working, that they are responding to certain inputs and things like that, signals from the flight controller. Again, those are all done without any Lewis scripting involved. Okay, and I'm going to break the video here. We'll do some scripting in a second. But if, like, again, if you, if you like these color patterns and you want to use them after class instead of the scripting patterns, then that works great. All right, sorry, my mission planner was talking to me. I don't know if you guys heard that. All right, so we'll stop the video here, and I'll see you in the next one.